Hi, my beebs. I have a little trigger warning for you, fresh out of the oven, hot and spicy. Even though this podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, sometimes we'll be talking about not so good mental health things like depression, anxiety, and constipation. I don't know why I said we'll be talking because I'm by myself, but cue the theme music. I don't have any theme music yet. (laughs) Okay, cue the royalty-free music. Apparently, they just let anybody make a podcast. I'm Christina Wolfgram. I'm an internet comedian, which is a job that I made it myself. And um, this is my mental health podcast. Hello, I'm Christina Wolfgram, and this is Sobcast. I'm still, uh, <laughs> I'm still trying to find my podcast voice. I don't know if that's it. Can someone teach me how to do a podcast voice? Well, we're just going to wing it. Welcome to Sobcast. This is a little brain baby that has been cooking up in my noggin for actually a couple of years now. I am completely unqualified to give any professional mental health advice, but I have always been really interested in finding new coping mechanisms for, um, you know, being a human. And that's what this podcast is going to be all about. Uh, In the future, I'm going to have actual professionals on here to give us uh, the lowdown on science and... uh, you know, actual real things. But um, in the meantime, I'm just exploring what I'm interested in. I was actually going to launch this podcast in April, but then Corona happened. I am so sick of saying that word. I should just call it like the disease that must not be named. The disease that must not be named. So it could be like T-D-M-N-B-N. God, that is not, that does not have a ring to it. Okay, whatever. So I've been in voluntary quarantine for about a week. And also, I am in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico. I'm a very lucky bean. I'm very social distance from all social anything. And I'm eating a lot of bean and cheese burritos, which is good for my mental health for sure. Just to uh, give you a heads up, I am going to be talking a lot about my own mental health experiences on Sobcast. And uh, that's where our story begins. Yesterday, which means day six of voluntary quarantine, I finally pooped after many days of not pooping. And as I was sitting on the toilet... Having a, having a little celebration. You know, you gotta celebrate the little things. Or in my case, a really big thing, because it had been a while. I thought, you know what? I shouldn't wait till April to launch this podcast. We're all stuck at home, if we're lucky. And um, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to start the conversation about how maybe other people out there are having anxiety-related bowel problems. I'm just, I'm just trying to make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I could talk more about mental health during this time, during this really weird bonkers time, but to be quite honest, I haven't figured it out yet. I've been scrolling through Instagram and I see a lot of things like stay positive. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, okay. And then a lot of kind of uh very pointed posts about you have to stay and you have to stay healthy, wash your hands, which I think is awesome. But reading one after the other, after the other, after the other, you know, can really get to you. And I'm sure a lot of you are feeling this right now. Uh, It's hard to know when to step away. So um, honestly, taking my poop yesterday was an amazing break. And uh, (laughs) it uh, reminded me of how this has been a problem my whole life. I mean, it's not even that big of a problem. Like, it could be worse. I was thinking about a couple of years ago when I was lucky enough to visit Rome, Italy. 
and I wasn't that anxious, but this does happen a lot when I travel. Actually, I I just read recently that about 40% of people get traveler's constipation. So, hey friends. Uh, So I'm in Rome. It's amazing. It's beautiful. I'm eating lasagna for breakfast. Everything is magical, but I think I didn't poop for like eight days or something. And that didn't stop me from eating all the spaghetti and um, testing every gelato flavor I could uh, get my hands on. So eventually my pants stopped fitting and I had to wear dresses uh, to make room for the growing food baby. (laughs) Was it uncomfortable? Yes. Was it worth it? Yes. Am I alone in this? No, I don't think so. And you'd think I'd be used to it by now. I used to do musical theater in high school, and I wouldn't poop like the whole week leading up to opening night. And then after opening night, it'd be like the floodgates would open and I'd feel great. I did have to pee every five seconds, which is also an anxiety thing, but I I just don't have time to question that right now. Is this a good podcast voice yet? Mm -hmm. Talking this low doesn't feel quite right for this subject matter. Or maybe I could make it more serious. Can I send that more royalty-free music? (laughs) Yeah, like that. In the spirit of talking about mental health and also intestinal health, I wanted to share with you my most embarrassing anxiety poop story. I hope it makes you laugh a little. It might make you gag a little. Please don't listen to this while you're eating a bean and cheese burrito. Unless that's your thing. That's totally that's totally cool. I'm not going to judge you. And I'm also, you know, I'm not the boss of you. Do whatever you want. So many, many moons ago, I was dating someone new that I was super excited about, but also so nervous around. I don't know. It was kind of puppy dog love and... I couldn't believe we were dating and I don't know, I just didn't have a grip. So we decided to go on a little getaway. Um, It was very exciting and nerve wracking for me. Oh gosh, so you can see where this is going. So the days leading up to it, I am going to Target and buying a bathing suit in case I need a bathing suit and I'm showing my friends all my outfits and I think I like bought new underwear because we are going on a trip and it's so exciting and I'm not nervous at all because I'm so fabulous and I have a boyfriend so gosh but my intestines were not on that train they were hoarding all my food just not letting it go and I didn't really even realize that was happening until the day we left. We were in the car for a little while. Then we got to our destination. I looked around. I was like, oh, this is so romantic. And I think I'm in love. And why haven't I pooped in like five days? Back then, I wasn't this open. So I didn't mention it to that guy. And by the way, If you're one of my ex-boyfriends watching or listening to this and you're thinking, oh, wow, is this, is this about me? Yeah, it is because it's happened with all of you. So other than feeling like I had just eaten a whole buffet meal at a golden corral, I felt pretty good. We had a nice day. We had dinner. It was super cute. I was feeling very grown up. And then I was like, you know, I think it's time to go to the bathroom. So I go in the super nice bathroom and um, my bowels released everything that they'd been holding in for the last few days. This is the kind of poop that nowadays I would take a picture of and send to all my friends because it 
looking back, it was impressive. It was probably like over a foot long and it was like the exact shape of beautiful intestines. Like it was gorgeous. But when I flushed the toilet, it didn't want to cooperate. Obviously, I didn't want to leave any evidence that I, as a beautiful, sexy young woman, ever pooped, especially not pooped gigantic, like monstrous baby size poos. Uh, so I decided I was going to have to do something about it. I didn't want to give away the secret, not just for me, but for all women who were trying to hide the fact that they have stinky poos, big old stinky poos. Stinky poos. <laughs> wow, if you need a little cheering up, just say stinky poo out loud. It's it's thrilling. So I flush again. The poop is literally too big to even get near the hole. If you've ever had a poop like this, you know. And I think if you've ever had a poop like this near a new person that you're dating, you know this panic. I mean, I was panicking. I look around the toilet, there is no plunger. So I start opening drawers. <laughs> it's not a lot in there. This is just a rental place where they are not prepared for this kind of emergency. Uh, I find a bunch of tissues. I find like two more rolls of toilet paper. I find like a toilet, uh, what do you call it? Like a scrubby thing. I was worried to use the toilet scrubber because poop would get stuck in there. That's kind of just asking for disaster. So I was like, hmm, these, can I use like a toilet paper roll? That might block everything up even more. I didn't want to put my hand in the toilet. Um, that was kind of my last resort, my plan D or something. I didn't have any gloves. I've spent basically my whole life not touching my own poop and I kind of just want to keep it that way. Finally, what I did was take all the toilet paper off one of the toilet paper rolls, make a neat little pile of toilet paper, and use the middle of the toilet roll to shove the poop down the hole. And you know what? It worked really well. <laughs> It actually broke the poop in two, and then it just, you know, it was like magic. It was kind of like when that first kid in Willy Wonka gets stuck in the chocolate tube, and then finally so much chocolate builds up that he gets like shot up. It was a lot like that, and it was magical. I think I used a bunch of the toilet paper and wrapped the roll up. It luckily didn't really have that much poop on it, and it didn't smell like... I'm, oh, seriously, I don't say this often, but I do think someone, whether it was a guardian angel or Oprah or one of the Charmin bears was looking out for me that day because the roll didn't really smell and poop didn't really get on it. So I wrapped it up in a bunch of toilet paper and I threw it away and I uh, haven't really talked about it until this moment. <laughs> but why? 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 Not why did I just tell you that story? I told you that story because I hoped it would make you laugh a little bit. And also, if you have any kind of bowel issues, whether it's related to your mental health or not, just that you feel a little less alone. <laughs> but I mean, why? Why does my anxiety affect my intestines? So I googled why does anxiety affect my poop? There's a lot of results. A lot. One of my favorite articles that I read was from squattypotty.com. If you don't know what a squatty potty is, it's basically like a stool that you can place under your feet while you use the bathroom. And it uh, apparently opens up your colon. I don't know. This isn't, this isn't an ad. I've tried it and I don't really see the difference. Anyway, what I saw again and again in all of these articles, some written by experts, some written by people like me who are just confused and looking for answers, what is happening in our bodies is that 
our anxiety is causing our flight or flight, our flight or flight, our fight or flight mechanisms in our body. If you don't remember learning about the fight or flight method in eighth grade science class, then let me refresh you real quick. It's this animalistic, instinctual chemical reaction that happens in our body when danger is around. So that means for our ancestors, that meant, you know, a tiger or, I don't know, like a stampede of water buffalo or like a volcano erupting. Their body would go into fight or flight and neurotransmitters called adrenaline and noradrenaline, I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly, shoot off in your brain and basically tell your body, okay, we need to be running as fast as possible right now. So get all the blood to muscles. Don't worry about anything else. Just ignore your normal job. We have to be running. So to make the job easier for the intestines, cavemen would just like poop their pants and then run from the tiger. And I think that still happens to a lot of people today. (laughs) If you are one of the people who are almost the opposite of me and experience hmm, the runs when you're feeling anxious, that's this same fight or flight thing going on. Uh, Your body's like, no, no, we can't carry this poop. We have to be like Michael Phelps and shave our whole body and make sure we don't have any extra weight on us so we can sprint. And nowadays, of course, unless you're living a much more exciting life than I am, you're probably not being chased by tigers or running away from volcanoes or stampedes of water buffalo. But that chemical reaction still exists in our body. So when we get afraid of something like a presentation at work or spending the weekend with a new guy or feeling kind of anxious about not being able to speak Italian in Rome, our bodies are like, oh, we need to run. So your heart will start beating fast. Your palms might get sweaty. All that horrible stuff that comes with an anxiety attack. Your body wants to run. I guess my body wants to hold on to the waist as tight as it can for as long as it can. Maybe it thinks that we don't have enough time to poop. Especially in this past week, I've had nothing but time to poop, but that's okay, body. It really could be worse. My next question was, is there a way to prevent poop issues that stem from anxiety? And scientists think that yes, it's definitely possible. A lot of them recommended very normal health things like eat fresh fruits and vegetables, make sure you exercise regularly, get eight hours of sleep. A couple of them said to avoid coffee and cheese. which dooms me to a life of constant constipation, I think. There are some sacrifices I'm just not willing to make. But yeah, <laughs> just in case that helps you. It's not going to help me, but in case it helps it helps you. Uh, my last stop inside the internet was one of my favorite resources, uh, webmd.com, the virtual doctor, if you will. And WebMD actually scared me, as usual. Love it. It's funny that there's this cycle of me feeling anxious, looking up the symptoms, and then reading WebMD, feeling more anxious. Hi, Biebs. I'm so sorry, but my camera stopped recording sometime in the middle of that. So if you want to hear the rest of the episode, you can find it on iTunes or Spotify or like all the other podcast places, like pick your favorite. Um, And I promise I'll get the hang of this. Okay. Love you. Bye.